As a sympathetic suitor may have said to you after a bout of disaffected coitus, it's not the size that matters, it's how you use it. Hopefully we didn't just get demonetized. And I'm sure Yamaha's team of esteemed engineers had this exact sentiment in mind when they designed the Yamaha R7. Much to the chagrin of 600 squids and spec sheet warriors, the R7 is larger in displacements than its defunct sibling, the R6. The 599cc four-cylinder racing machine that earned the title of making the second best beginner bike right behind the Turbo Hayabusa. But despite the extra cubes in the R7, it makes 50 less horsepower. And this may be a turnoff for the smooth brain squid who is eager to hang out with Kurt Cobain and Amy Winehouse in the great age-restricted social club in the sky. But for mature beginners who have been saving their lunch money for long enough to contend with the price tag, or intermediate riders who want a street-oriented sport bike that is leaps and bounds more ideal than its super sport predecessor, the R7 may just be the best bike you can buy. So, you want a Yamaha R7? Let's discuss this today on the episode of Middleweight Dude, Team Yamaha Blue, Yami Noob. Let's get into it. Yamaha R7 is a recent addition to Yamaha's lineup. Initially released for the 2022 model year, the R7 was designed to fill the truly street-oriented sport bike niche that few motorcycles have been able to satisfy. Middleweight sport bikes like the former R6 have waned in popularity as riders have begun to prioritize torquey twin cylinder motorcycles for the street, and also as emission regulations have made producing four cylinder engines kinda hard. A trend that began with the Ducati Monster and the Suzuki SV650 in the late 90s and has since grown to include countless other naked motorcycles, including Yamaha's own MT-07. But the problem with these bikes, if you can even consider it to truly be a problem, is that they are always naked bikes. They have upright and relaxed ergonomics with wide flat handlebars and exposed bodyworks without full race fairings. While the naked bike is objectively more approachable and comfortable for sustained daily use, there are still plenty of fast boys out there that not only want to go fast, but they want to look fast too. And if we ignore the Ninja 650, it was only until a few years ago with the release of the Aprilia RS660 that riders were able to get a fully fared sport bike that had an engine that was designed to prioritize accessible low down torque with a smooth and linear power band. Prior to then, if you wanted a fully fared middleweight bike, you were mostly limited to a gutless four cylinder that wouldn't start to make any real power until over 8,000 RPM. And then that top end rush would come on fast and hard. Peaking hard and fast can be an incredibly satisfying experience. But for most riders, whether riding alone or with a partner, power that comes on low at the bottom and sustained with all the way through completion of the rev range is a far more preferable experience. With all this in mind, Yamaha was the first of the big four to discontinue their 600 class sport bike for sale for street use. Although the Yamaha R6 is still available in a track only variant that doesn't have any necessary DOT equipment. The R6 was a race bred motorcycle designed for competition in the middleweight super sport class of motorcycle racing. It used a 599cc inline four engine produced from 1999 until 2020. There were many updates and improvements over the years, but you can expect an R6 to make between 115 and 127 horsepower depending on the model year. The highest of which can be found in the 2008 to 2009 model year, which is in my humble opinion, the best generation for this motorcycle. And I like it so much, I'm giving one away. If you haven't seen it by now, we're giving away this absolutely classic 2008 Yamaha R6. This bike has been dominating racetracks for over 20 years and has been praised by street squids for its glorious top end rush. To get entered to win this bike, you can become a member at Yamanu.co, which will grant you a bunch of entries as well as provide you with a members only exclusive content, access to our Discord server, and 10% off all your orders from Yamanu.co. Code. Or if you're afraid of commitment, you can get entered to win by purchasing anything from the site, including gear, parts, or tires. We sell all kinds of stuff on the site and have great shipping times as well. Every dollar spent will get you one entry to win. Today is actually the last day to utilize a 10% off of all Scorpion helmets on the site. So get yourself a new lid and get entered to win this Yamaha R6 at the same time. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. All right, now back to the video. So as I was saying, the Yamaha R6 was always a track monster. And as anyone who has regularly ridden super sport motorcycles on the street, a lot of that esteem and prowess gets lost in translation. Of course, bringing a motorcycle to 15,000 RPM and feeling the onset of peak power that comes with it will provide an endorphin rush regardless of whether you're riding on the track or the street. It is a lot of fun. But unfortunately on the street, by the time you get all the way up to Redline, you're gonna be awfully close to kissing the rear bumper of the church van covered in Korean lettering that's driving 
at 15 miles an hour below the speed limit. The way a conventional 600cc sport bike makes their power is just too inconvenient if you intend on riding frequently or for long periods of time or in stop and go traffic. So as the middleweight four cylinder sport bike platform waned in popularity paired with impending emissions regulations, Yamaha retired the R6 for sale as a street legal production model to make way for the R7. But hold your horses, we can't talk about the R7 without shedding some light on the bionicle that started it all, the MT-07. The MT-07, originally referred to as the FZ-07, has been Yamaha's middleweight parallel twin offering since 2014, and definitely a cash cow motorcycle for Yamaha. Seriously, I think they've sold like 80,000 units of the MT-07 platform. That's a lot, dude. This bike has been revered for its fun and playful nature and its approachability in both price and power. And much of this adoration is owed to the CP2 power plant because I mean come on people sure don't like this bike for the suspension the CP2 engine is Yamaha's 689 cc parallel twin that uses the 270 degree cross plane crank design distilled down from the R1 compared to the way four cylinders in the R6 screams as it's wound out to redline the CP2 grunts and growls the minute the throttle is blipped open this engine has a significant amount of low down torque making about 40 foot pounds right at 3000 rpm and then keeping it there throughout the rest of the rev range with a flat torque curve and a linear power band the CP2 engine is an ideal engine for city riding streets. The MT-07 has been the ideal for the inexpensive and fun, lightweight, naked bikes for almost 10 years now. Despite some of the complaints of wonky handling and cheap feeling components on older models, the MT-07 has always been a bike that younger riders can grow into and enjoy for a long time. Making 74 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque, the MT-07 falls into what I like to call the beginner plus category, where a new rider with their head on straight could justify starting an MT-07 compared to an outright 3 or 400 class motorcycle and enjoy it for many seasons to come without getting bored or immediately feeling the need to level up. But Papa Yam, what about sport bikes? You know, a full set of plastics, a leather gimp suit, and whips and chains to match. Naked bikes are ugly and look like insects or robots or toys that have been mutilated by the sadistic neighbor kid. Well, listen here, my squids. Yamaha has put a hold on manufacturing baby grand so they could release and give you the street-oriented sport bike you deserve. Finally, in 2022, Yamaha released the R7. The R7, which could have been a half-assed effort if it truly were just an MT-07 with a set of plastics, does offer a unique riding experience that is far more composed. The R7, of course, uses the same CP2 engine pulled from the MT-07, making identical power at 74 ponies and 50 anime footy pajamas. The frame is pulled from the MT-07 as well, with some modifications like changes to the rake angle for sharper handling. Designed in R-bike styling, the R7 is a fully fared and pretty visually striking looking motorcycle. Unlike the relaxed motard riding style position for the MT-07, the R7 has pretty sporty and committed riding positions with low clip-ons and far rear sets. The average super sport rider should feel quite at home in the cockpit of the R7 despite its highly street-worthy power plant. The R7 has great improvements made to the suspension compared to the M207 as well. It features an inverted 41mm KYB fork that is fully adjustable with preload and rebound and compression adjustability, as well as preload and rebound adjustability in the monoshock and the rear. These updates make the R7 far more track capable than the M207 could ever dream of being. Many enthusiasts and track day hobbyists have enjoyed the R7 on the racetrack, as have professionals in Moto America's twins cup class. Much like the MT-07, the R7 could serve as a first motorcycle for the mature rider who wants a motorcycle they can grow into. The only thing holding the R7 back for newer riders is the price tag. Coming in at 9200 bucks, at close to 10 grand, it may be hard for a brand new rider to commit to an R7 in lieu of a collapsed Craigslist 600 or a Ninja 650, or even in a secondhand MT-07 which can be had for four or five grand nowadays. An interesting side note, the introduction of an R7 has led to the discussion on the evolution of Yamaha's motorcycle lineup and if there will be an R9 in the future. Currently, Yamaha makes motorcycles in both MT and R lines that share components and increase in size and functionality in an identical sequence. There is the MT-03 and R3 that each use the 321cc parallel twin, the MT-07 and R7 that use the 689cc parallel twin, and then the MT-10 and the R1 that use the 999cc in line 4. That being said, it wouldn't be that outside of the realm of possibility for Yamaha to put the spicy 899 90cc triple from the MT-09 into a fully fared sport bike as well. There are reports of Yamaha filing patents from an R9 trademark, and many have speculated that an R9 could be coming soon in the next few years. Luckily for the R7, there are few sport bikes in production that also serve the same torque-forward twin-cylinder sport bike niche. The closest competitor is the Aprilia 
RS660. And frankly, Aprilia was the first in this game to release this style of motorcycle, and it's a little bit more of a well thought out effort. The RS660 is a very cool motorcycle that has seen much praise on the channel. It is a fully furred sport bike with a torquey 270 degree parallel twin that makes 100 horsepower and 50 foot pounds of torque. The 659cc engine is derived down from the RSV4 motorcycle as it is highly competitive tech package. The RS660 likely has the most advanced tech package found in any middleweight motorcycle with adjustable wheelie control, traction control, cornering ABS, a quick shifter, and even more stuff I don't remember right now. The RS660 essentially has enough technology to make 200 horsepower manageable while only making 100 horsepower. So is this a bit superfluous? Maybe so, but it is a dang sweet bike. You will pay for the extra power and extra tech though with the RS660 coming in at $11,500. Not to mention the chain smoking Italian elephant in the room, Aprilia's less than squeaky clean track record for reliability. Although the RS660 has been in production for a few years now and most of the gremlins have been sorted out, if you want a simpler workhorse machine with bulletproof Japanese reliability and a lower asking price, the R7 makes a very good case for itself. The Ninja 650 is vaguely a competitor to the R7. It is a street oriented parallel twin sport bike after all, but it's definitely lacking in the character department in comparison to both the R7 and the RS660. The engine might as well have been pulled straight from a John Deere with its utilitarian nature. It's also very upright and it's not very sporty. The suspension is quite soft and very street oriented. The R7 and the RS660 are both much more razor sharp. The Ninja 650 makes 67 horsepower and 47 foot pounds of torque. So the engine is both down on power and character. The Ninja 650 only has preload adjustability as well, which doesn't rival the fully adjustable fork on the R7. The R7 also has a Brembo master cylinder up at the front, which feels amazing. The Ninja 650 has always been the motorcycle for the person who wants a comfortable commuter that looks like a sport bike, whereas the R7 is a sport bike that's just comfortable for the street. The Ninja 650 also only costs $1,000 less than the R7, so in my opinion, just get the R7. Lastly, there is the Honda CBR650R, which is another 650 middleweight sport bike, but unlike the Ninja RS660 or R7, the CBR uses a four-cylinder engine that is tuned for more accessible low-down power. This bike makes 94 horsepower and 46 foot-pounds of torque. While making more power than the R7, it also weighs 456 pounds, which is 40 pounds more than the R7 and 50 pounds more than the RS660. It also costs $9,900. Bearing all this in mind, the CBR650R is too powerful and too expensive for the beginner plus category that the R7 belongs to, and is lacking in a lot of features you'd find in a motorcycle pushing $10,000. And it's just not gonna handle as sharply as an R7 or an R660. I feel like amongst its competitors, the R7 makes an incredible case for itself. It has everything you need to be able to confidently ride both street and track, a great engine with lots of character and usability, and nothing frivolous that will drive up the cost. And as far as reliability goes, it's a Yamaha, and it's based off of a 10-year-old engine that everybody knows everything about. There's really nothing to worry about with these motorcycles. So whether you're a responsible 35-year-old Chad who's looking for his first motorcycle, or a squid with a few years of traffic violations under his belt and just blew the motor on his 600, the R7 is definitely a motorcycle worth looking into, and I highly recommend it. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and head over to yamanoob.co to take advantage of our promotion on Scorpion Helmets and get entered to win our R6. We'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Fact. Japanese inventor Yoshiro Nakamatsu has over 3,500 patents. Part of his creative process involves diving underwater where he says he comes up with his best ideas. Nakamatsu claims to benefit from lack of oxygen to the brain during his dives making inventions 0.05 seconds before death. Goodbye. Keep, Keep watching. watching.